Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P.D. Warsky, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And this is the 10th video tutorial of our 10-part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development. And as I say that, I'm actually lying to you. Uh, I've gone ahead to record this video tutorial and I realized that there's just a ton of information I want to cover and I really don't want to uh, move too fast or kind of take away from your learning. So I'm actually going to do an 11th video tutorial of this 10-part video tutorial series. Before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontowebsitedevelopercom slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series. This one will be up as soon as I finish it. Uh, every tutorial is only $20, and if you purchase more than one, you will get an automatic discount applied when you go ahead to check out. Uh, I greatly appreciate everyone that's done that. Your sales, rather your purchases, help me to continue to bring these video tutorials to you and keep them free and keep them frequent. Uh, unfortunately, right now they're not as frequent as I'd like, but I plan to change that. Um, alternatively, if you don't have the $20 to make a purchase and you'd like to help out, please leave a comment, give it a thumbs up on YouTube. I greatly appreciate those. It's great feedback for me, helps me keep going, but also YouTube uses it as a way to track engagement and promote these videos to other Drupal users. Lastly, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You'll notice I'm just nearing 4,000 users. Uh, that's a huge milestone for me and I, I really want to hit that and I can't wait to see it happen. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. That said, let's go back over to our page. Um, so you'll notice here uh, in this video tutorial, what we're going to cover off is this remove application. Um, in the previous video tutorials, we've gone ahead and we can approve and deny these applications. And so once they're approved, what we want to do is provide users or rather administrators the ability to choose should there still be a node that you can apply to. And so we're going to do that by using the actual flag administration page. And so you'll see here if I uh, look at flag application, I can go ahead and I can edit. And there's a bunch of different options associated with this by default through the flag module itself. And so you'll see that we've got messages, we've got flag access, uh, a whole bunch of different stuff. And if we look at the API for flag module itself, um, there's a nice hook that's here, which is flag uh, hook flag options alter. And when you read the description, it, it talks about us wanting to extend the flags and provide additional custom options uh, and how we can do that. And the flag module will actually uh, itself go ahead and handle adding those options to it. But before we implement that hook, I want to show you how we would do this manually, uh, because you won't always necessarily be working with the flag API, uh, and you'll have to handle this on your own. So let's go ahead and do that. What we need to do is two things. First, what we need to do is that form that actually administers the flag module, we need to alter that and provide in our own settings. Secondly, what we need to do is handle when those settings are actually submitted. So let's go ahead and cover the first part and actually change the form. So I'm going to go implements hook uh, form form ID alter. This is a new function which I don't think we've talked about. Uh, I will walk you through it. Flag application form alter. Um, let's go check out api.drupal.org. Hook form alter. We can go ahead and search this. What this allows us to do is actually uh, hook into an existing form and make some changes to it. And so you'll see here, there's an alternative to it, which is hook form form ID alter. And so hook form ID or hook form alter is called on every single form on the page. And so you'll see when we DSM this, why this is a problem. Uh, and so you've got this more specific form ID alter function here. I'll let you read about this. But essentially what you get is the form, the form state, and then the form ID itself. So going back here, what we need to do is by reference, take the form, by reference, take the form state, and then take the form ID. And what I didn't show you, I should have showed you, was this is all defined on that page. You can see right up here, here's the function signature. So we could have just copied that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to DSM the form ID. You'll see why in a minute and the form itself. Let's go back to our page here. Um, all forms uh, are, are cached, all calls the forms are cached rather. So when we implement hook form ID um, or hook form alter, it's not going to call unless we clear our caches. And so here you'll notice we called one function and actually returned four different forms. That's why we're going to use for the, the, the other one, hook form form ID alter. But specifically, this is the form ID we're looking for. So let's go ahead and copy this. In our function, we're going to go and paste that in here. We can save that. We can get rid of this form ID and we can get rid of this here. Um, and then we'll have to clear our caches when we're back working with that. 
But now if we look at this actual form, you'll notice that there's uh, a flag name here. Uh, so this form for flags is actually generic. It's called, it's the same form for every single uh, flag. And we want to make sure that we're not actually changing the, the administration form for every single flag, just flag application. So we know that first thing we're going to have to do is write an if statement. You know, if it's this specific form, let's go ahead and change it. Secondly, what we're going to do is let's check out how all the other settings are rendered here. And then we're going to do something the same. So looking at this, uh, sometimes you'll see where there's a specific setting in the form or a specific key that will be, you know, specific to your uh, whatever you're working on, right? Here, that's not the case. Um, we're looking at the form and you can see that messages is actually, you know, a component right in the root of the form, right? It's not as part of some other array. Uh, same as global, same as access. These are all settings for the form itself. Um, and they're all defined specifically in the form. And the reason why I'm, I'm flagging that for you is because in our code, I'm going to copy some stuff here and walk you through it. Um, what we're going to do is actually add it to the root of the form. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And what I'm going to do is just, of course, things don't want to line up very nicely here. So first thing, as I mentioned, we want to make sure we're targeting the flag application. Uh, so that's the form name. So that's the first thing we do. This code is only going to run if we're adding flag application. Then to the root of the form, we're going to add a flag application key. This itself is going to be an array. Uh, you'll notice this as a common through common theme in Drupal is Drupal loves arrays. And so here we're adding an array and using the form API, which I've shown you previously. So I'm trying to get back to the page form API. We can look at the type. And so what we are going to do is actually add a field set. And so, um, you know, an easier way to do this, I'll, I'll show you field set. Um, it's right here. So we can click on field set. This is the specific type um, and sorry, type goes across. So that's why field set is here and we can see all that, uh, all the information about it, what we can use. But the easier way to think about this is if you go over to, let's say messages, you can see messages is a field set and then titles is messages. So in our code, what I've gone ahead and done is type is equal to field set, title is equal to flag application settings, and then I've added this collapsible. And if you look at the form API itself, you can see that collapse is available and by default it's false. And then collapsible by default is false as well. We can actually create that as a collapsible setting. Uh, and then some of the other things that you can actually play with. So I'll let you read those, but you'll notice we have to have the type uh, and, and the title. So we've gone ahead and we've added those type title and it can be collapsible. Then we're actually going to add two components to this field set. The first is going to be this approved action. And so what is going to happen um, if the user uh, or if the administrator wants to do this? It's a checkbox and it will disable the link. If it's checked, it will disable the link. If it's not checked, it won't disable the link. And so my default value right now is actually pulling in using the form API. I don't want to do that. I'm going to show you how we can actually manually do this. So I'm going to take these, these two default settings out and we'll, we'll randomly do them ourselves. And then lastly, I provided the description, which is actually going to show up underneath the component to explain to administrators what this does. Uh, the second component flag application maintain message, just straightforward. Uh, it's a text field. The titles maintain message. It's going to have a default value. And then it's got this uh, description as well. So we need to get this default value in here. Um, what we're going to do is use a function, actually use a nice, um, uh, I guess, functionality from Drupal, which is how it handles variables. And so if you look at variable set, we can search this. And you'll see that you can set variables, sets a persistent variable. And what this does is it will write a variable to the variables table in your database, and it will provide it with a name, which is its key, and then a specific value. And then you can pull that out. You can also, you can set that, put it in, and you can get that. It's one variable. And then that way you don't actually have to call, you know, your own um, uh, database uh, function call. And uh, it's a nice way to handle when you have these one-off, one things that you need to uh, keep persistent across the site. And you'll see that nice uh, examples and stuff down here as well. So going back to our code, what we want to do is uh, we want a function. and so. Um, this is typically going to be a, a one line or if statement. And so um, variable, variable get 
can't remember how to break these. Okay, pause the video there for a second. Just remember the syntax. So uh, if I jump back, you know, regardless, we're here. So it's uh, variable get uh, is the function that we're going to call. And so it's, we're going to ask it to get this, this specific uh, variable. And so this is something that we'll set later, but I'm just using the same name here uh, for clarity, uh, which is common. And so what I'm saying is get this variable. Um, if you can, then use that value. If you can't, then use zero. And so that's the default value that's going to be turned in. I'm going to do the same thing for the message. So I'm going to copy this and paste this down here. And it's not going to be approved action. It's going to be this specific variable name. And then this one here. And it's not going to be a zero. It's actually text. So pass in an empty string. I'm going to go ahead, back over to my page. You'll see I was testing things here. I'm going to flush the caches just to make sure. Because remember, uh, when you were working on this, it would have been, we changed the function name to the form ID. So now if I scroll down, you can see uh, I'm getting this blank disable link and I'm getting this blank message. And to make sure this is actually working, let's go ahead and add this to one if it doesn't get anything and just add this as a test. If it doesn't get anything, reload the page and you'll see we're getting those that information. So it's not getting this variable get and so it's using the defaults that we're passing in here. Uh, this, is a, this is called a ternary uh, operator. So uh, do a quick search for that in PHP if you're not sure what I'm doing here. Essentially, it's a one line if statement. Uh, this is the if. If you're doing this, then return this, else return this. Uh, so that's what's going on there. Now what we need to do is we need to DSM the form here and add our own uh, form submit function. So let's go DSM form, save that, go back to our page. Um, it already knows of the function, so we can just reload and we'll see if we're getting it here. And then there's this pound submit. These are function calls that have to be called, so we're going to add to that. So just outside of this, we're going to go form pound submit. And it's going to be the next one is going to be flag application um, form flag form alter submit. I know that's ugly, but that's what we're going to create. Copy this. Oh, we need a semicolon there. We're going to go function. And it's going to take the form and the form state. We're going to DSM the form and the form state. Copy that. I'm going to move my DSM to the bottom just to make sure in the event that we need to debug this. Um, let's keep it inside here. Go back over here. Reload our page. We should go down to the submit thing here and we see that this is being called now and so uh, if we submit this we'll go ahead and leave all of that just go ahead and hit save we're going to get these two function calls from line uh, 84 and 85 those correspond to 84 and 85 so first one's form second one's form state and if we look at the form state we can look at the values and we can look down here and see flag application approved action, flag application approved maintain message. So those are things that we want to actually set. So in our code, we are going to go down here and we are going to, uh, let's just check to make sure that they're, well, what we should do is write a check, make sure that they're all there and all that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is just show you how to set them. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, Let's just go uh, variable set. Um, and then we're going to call this one variable set uh, flag application setting. And then this is going to be form state. This was values. This was same thing. There we go, variable set. And then we're gonna do the next one. Copy this, we would paste this. And then, oops, we would take this, paste that in there, add our semicolon. And this would actually be maintained a message. Save that, back to our page here. 
Let's edit this. Let's go ahead and we'll disable the link and say this is a test of disabling. Go ahead and save this. All right, let's just make sure we went to the right place here. We went into values and then we took those. Okay, that's great. Let's go back into our edit here. And we can see here it's disabled. This is a test of disabling. So that's how you would manually do that. Now what I'm going to show you is we're going to actually just quickly use the form API to do this. So this was all nice and handy. If you weren't using a form API or there wasn't a module that was providing you, that's how you would do it. You should obviously run some checks to make sure that this actually exists and all that kind of stuff and, and whatnot. Uh, the actual writing to uh, the database is great because you don't have to worry about the fact that uh, you have to escape values. It's all handled by variable set. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to get rid of this because that's all gone and this is no longer going to be here what we're going to do is use that uh, specific function here the hook flag options alter so i'm going to paste in some code here copy this paste this so now what we're doing is flag application flag options alter uh, let's get passed in the options get passed in the flag so flag name is flag application so we only want it to apply to that one uh, by default, it's going to be zero. It's going to be unchecked. By default, it's going to be an empty message. Then what we're going to do, it's not going to be this default variable here. Um, we'll DSM the form. Save this. I'm not sure if we have to clear our caches for the flag application options. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and do that anyways. Now when we look at this, we can look inside the flag option itself. And you can see down here, here are the default values. And so what we want to do is we want to go back to our code and we don't want this to be here. We want this to be the form and we want this to be the flag object. And then this should be the approved action. Right. And then this is going to be the same thing down below. Go ahead and save that. Go back to our page. We're going to reload our page and we cannot use, oh, turns out flag is an, ob is an object. So this should be like this. Same as this here. Go ahead and save that. Go back here. Should have known that. Reload this. And so if we scroll down, we're going to get the blanks because those are the default. Let's go ahead and test these. Let's uh, disable that link and go uh, you know, disabled via flag API. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go back into our edit, scroll down, and you'll see that it's actually saving it itself. The flag application module, or the flag module itself handles this, handles setting, uh, getting, and it also applies it to the actual flag object. So anytime the flag object is used throughout any other option, you are going to see these settings, which is kind of cool. So that's why we did it that way instead of the variable set and get, uh, which is a whole bunch of manual stuff we would have to play with later. Uh, we don't have to do that. Anyways, I know this tutorial went a little bit long. We're, we're nearing the 20 minute mark, but I wanted to show you all this. I wanted to show you the manual way you can do it and then the way we actually do it with the flag API so that you have an understanding of it. In the next video tutorial, what we'll do is we'll then take a look at this see if things are disabled, see if a, a flag application has been approved, and then we'll disable the link. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Please give this video a tutorial a thumbs up if it helped you, and we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much.